after test level definition and test objective, now we will focus on test level basis. Let's start with component level. Now we will list down different requirements required for performing component testing. First requirement for component testing is detailed design. Let's see what is detailed design. Software designer writes detailed design in order to give a software development team overall guidance to the architecture of the software project. If this document is available for component testing, it will help the tester to understand how components are placed and which component will be available when and their internal structure. Second requirement is code. Since component testing is done on the smallest unit of the code, code is one of the necessary requirements for the component testing. One more important point. Component testing is white box type of testing, where code is visible to the tester. Third requirement is data model. In component testing, we validate the component of the software by providing different data, like valid and invalid data to validate if the component behaves as expected. Data model can help in selecting the input data and validating it against the expected output. Fourth requirement is component specification. This refers to specific documents that lay out how the component is implemented and its purpose. If the tester knows how the component is implemented, it will help them to write robust component testing test cases. So these were the four requirements we need for component testing. Detail design, code, data model, and component specification. Now let's move to the integration testing. Here, we have seven requirements which can be useful for integration testing. And let's start with the first one, which is software and system design. Like component testing, here also we need to design document, but instead of detailed design, we go for the software or system design. By seeing this design document, we will come to know how components are connected and how they are interacting with each other. Next one is sequence diagram. Sequence diagram helps tester to understand how data flows through the interfaces. Third one is interface and communication protocol specifications. If in a project any specific protocol is used for sending or receiving data, then specification related to those protocol is required for testing. Fourth requirement for integration testing is use cases. If we know how the interfaces are going to be used by user, then we can prepare better integration test cases. Fifth requirement is architecture at component or system level. Similar to detailed design, architecture provides detailed overview of how components interact with each other, and it is one of the helpful requirements for performing integration testing. Next requirement is workflow. Similar to sequence diagram, workflow lets us know how data flows in a software. Now the last requirement is very important. Apart from the internal interfaces, we must know how software is going to interact with the external interfaces. So all the external interfaces must be defined and provided as an input for the integration testing. So these were the requirements which can be used as an input for integration testing. Software and system design, sequence diagrams, interface and communication protocol specifications, use cases, architecture at component or system level, workflows, and external interface definitions. Now let's move on to system testing requirements. First one is very obvious. We need system and software requirement specification. This is the document which specifies what shall we implement in the software. Using this, tester can write their test cases, which will be used to test which implements are correct or not. Second input is risk analysis report. 
This report can be used to prioritize the test cases. Based on the priority features, will be selected for testing. Next is use case, epics and user stories. If we know how the system will be used by the user, we can use that information for writing system-level test cases. Next is model of system behavior. Most of the time, it is not possible to perform testing on the actual hardware for which software is developed due to high investment costs. So to reduce the costs, the model of the hardware is developed on which system testing is done. Next requirement is state diagram. This provides us the abstract view of different states of the software. Regarding this, we will study in detail in fourth chapter. There, we will see some practical example on it. Last one is system and user manual. An explanation of this is similar to that of use cases. For the system testing, the requirements are system and software requirement specifications, both functional and non-functional, risk analysis reports, use cases, epics and user stories, models of system behavior, state diagrams, and system and user manuals. Now let's move to acceptance testing. If you see any high-level document, then you can consider it as a requirement for acceptance testing. For an example, first requirement is business process, user or business requirement. These documents contain high-level requirement. These requirements can be used to see if developed software is as per the expected software or not. Next point is standards. For example, regulations, legal or security standards. These documents are used to see if developed software is as per the standards or not. Next is use cases or user stories. As mentioned before, this document will provide information regarding how user is going to use this software. Next is system requirement or user documentation. This document will provide information regarding how the software shall be implemented. Using this document, we can verify if the implemented software is as per the expected or not. Next requirement is risk analysis report. As mentioned before, this document will help tester to understand which feature is important as per that feature for testing will be selected. Apart from this, there are a few more requirements which act as input for acceptance testing. First one is backup restore and disaster recovery procedures. This document provides information regarding unusual conditions like what happens if the system crashes. Next one is non-functional requirement. This document provides information like what shall be the response time, stress testing, or maximum load on the system. Next is operations document. Here, we see how the software shall be operated in the normal condition. Fifth point is deployment and installation instruction. This document provides information how software shall be installed and if there is any future software update, how that shall be handled. Sixth point is related to performance targets. This document specifies how the software shall respond. This is also one of the non-functional requirements. Last point is database. If you're working on cloud computing or SQL-related projects, then type of data used by software is mentioned in this document. So these were the different requirements we can get for acceptance testing. Though there are many points here, but to remember, you can categorize them into groups, like requirements it can be business, user, use cases, user stories, or system-level requirements. Second group is standard, like regulations, security, or legal. Third group is installation-related, like recovery, backup, disaster recovery, and installation. Fourth group could be non-functional requirements, like performance target. 
If you know the objective of the test level, then it will be easy for you to remember these requirements. All the requirements are documented in the single page and attached to this video for your quick revision before the exam. Thank you.